Hey, this video is actually a direct response to a video I saw recently by Basement Bodybuilding. I will link it down below. Uh, I like the channel. The guy seems like an intelligent guy, very well spoken, he explains things clearly. And I haven't seen all his videos, but what I've seen recently, because I discovered his channel probably about a week or two ago, I, I subscribed to it. Um, a lot of the opinions he gives on like exercise selection or kind of avoiding traditional dogmatic views or kind of dispelling myths that are that's pushed by people who really don't know what they're talking about or directing um, people towards proper training if you're natural versus enhanced. All that stuff, he's actually really spot on, has a lot of good content, a lot of solid points, which is why I was surprised recently. Uh, he did a video, I forget what the name of the video is, but like I said, I'll link it down below. Uh, he basically talks about if you're doing a, a fly motion, I can't remember if he specified with dumbbells or more cables, but it doesn't matter. He's basically saying like, let's say you're doing dumbbell flies. He was saying that the limiting factor often is the bicep. And he went on to explain that, you know, if you, if you think about it, the weight in your hand, as it's straightened out, that's creating a moment arm against your bicep. And that's, that bicep is a smaller, weaker muscle. And because there's a moment arm working against it, um, that, that basically the, the bicep ends up being the limiting factor. Now, I probably butchered that, but I watched the video two or three times, and that was a super oversimplified explanation of what I understood that he was trying to say. If we're worried about doing a fly because we want to, like, isolate our chest, well, guess what? As you go through the range of motion and as the resistance profile changes, now there becomes a moment arm between the weight in your hand, in your elbow. So at the top of a fly, assuming you have mostly straight arms, you're fine. You're not gonna feel anything in your bicep. As you go down, this becomes a moment arm that increases as you go down. So now your chest is a, a bit stronger than your bicep just based on size alone, regardless of how advanced you are. I'd say especially if you're more advanced actually. Now it becomes more of a bicep limiting factor in this movement. So while you're technically isolating the chest from a joint's perspective, now the bicep is becoming the limiting factor potentially. But the absolute weight doesn't matter. The reason why you have to use lightweight on a fly is because your biceps will limit you. So I had responded and uh, it didn't get a reply from him. Uh, it didn't seem to get much attention at all. So I don't know if he didn't see it or if he saw it and he didn't agree with it. Uh, Either way, though, I did want to at least make a direct response and try to maybe explain my point a little more clearly. I don't even know for sure that he will see this. He probably won't see it, but there are people who will see this and maybe they saw that video or maybe they've heard of this idea. So I wanted to kind of clarify something. Um, it is true that moment arms are a big deal. This really easy way to think about this is that if you hold your hand like this close to your shoulder, you tell somebody to push down as hard as they can, they might be able to lift themselves off the ground and you can brace, kind of hold up their whole body weight right here while it's by your shoulder. But if you move your hand out to here, suddenly you can't hold up an entire person right here. There's, there's a moment arm that's been created. There's now leverage working against your, your delt, your front delt, and your whole body actually. Now you continue with that, if you go all the way out here, now your hand is so far away and it's created such a long moment arm that even a fairly light weight can feel catastrophically heavy. Uh, not only is it hard to lift, but even isometrically, it makes your whole body want to tip over. You have to, to really lean back and, and counter the weight. It's really, really tough. Now the same thing happens with something like flies. He was saying how uh, the, the moment arm that's created on the bicep puts that at such a disadvantage that that becomes a limiting factor. What I wanted to point out is that there's a few things to keep in mind. Um, when it comes to something like, let's say dumbbell flies, you see a lot of guys who want to use heavier weight. One way that they'll compensate and use the heavier weight is they simply won't keep their arm as straight. When they're at the bottom of the movement, instead of having their arm nearly straight and just slightly bent, I've seen guys have like a 90 degree angle, basically. As they come down, their forearms are vertical of the ground. Now, that obviously creates more of a pushing style movement but I've seen guys do this, or maybe their, their elbows are, 
are technically a little narrower than their wrist and there's a slight tiny maybe two inch moment arm but they have really really bent elbows so there is either no or very minimal moment arm against the bicep and they're keeping the tension on the on the pecs but even if we go with the assumption that somebody does have their arms relatively straight and there's just a slight bend in the elbow and it is creating this um this moment arm here, let's just say everybody's different, everybody's limbs are different, but for the sake of easy math, we'll say that this moment arm is 30 centimeters, something like that. If this moment arm, let's say, is, is 30 centimeters long, which is about one foot, that's a one foot moment arm against the bicep, that's true. But that same one foot moment arm still applies to the pec as well. And as a matter of fact, because it extends, this moment arm is extending from the elbow, that is in addition to the moment arm that's already being created against the pec that goes from the shoulder to the elbow. So now the total length of the moment arm against your pec is twice as long as the moment arm against your bicep. So the exact same weight feels twice as heavy to your chest, to your pec, as it does to your bicep because the moment arm working against your pec is twice as long as the moment arm working against your bicep. So immediately, that kind of evens the playing field. It's the same weight, yes, but it's going to feel twice as heavy to your pec as it does to your bicep in that situation. The second thing you have to remember is that the pec is having to do more. There is a higher demand being placed on it. So the pec has to lower the weight eccentrically. If you're pausing at the bottom momentarily, because that's how you want to do the tempo, then there is a brief isometric hold, and then there is a concentric movement, the contraction of the muscle, and it's going through that for various reps. So there's more total uh, work being demanded of the pec with this double length moment arm working against it versus the bicep, when you're lowering it, it's only holding the weight isometrically. If we assume that your elbows are slightly bent at the top, and then as you go down, you keep your arms the exact same rigid position, you never bend your elbows to kind of compensate and keep pressure off the bicep. If we assume that you're very, very strict about keeping the exact same arm position from the top all the way to the bottom, then even in that, that's, that's placing the highest demand on the bicep, but even then, the demand on the bicep is not through a eccentric and a concentric, it's only isometric. The bicep only has to just hold that weight there statically. And it's doing so with a significantly shorter moment arm than what's being placed on the, on the pec. So the bicep is almost never, I've, I mean, I wanna say never is never the limiting factor when it comes to flies because I've never seen it or even heard of it real world actually being the case where somebody couldn't do flies because their bicep gave out. But we all know that there's always an exception to the rule. I'm sure it has happened or somebody has experienced bicep failure on flies. Um, however, this typically, in let's say 99% of the cases, is not, is not what ends up limiting the amount of weight you can use or the amount of reps you can do when it comes to something like dumbbell flies. If you are concerned about the bicep basically being the limiting factor on a pec fly, a dumbbell fly, whatever it is, I don't think that's the case, especially because real world, most lifters in the gym, everybody's de degree of, of flexation in their elbows can be a bit different, but most people will do the exact same thing where their arms are pretty straight at the top and then the lower they go, very slowly, they bend their elbows more and more and more. Now, who knows how bent it's going to be at the bottom, but it's it's significantly more bent the lower they go. And then as it gets closer to the top, it straightens out. So they kind of subconsciously without meaning to will minimize the moment arm on the bicep. If you think I'm wrong about this, I would actually really appreciate hearing it. I'm always open to new ideas. Maybe somebody can, can enlighten me, can expand my understanding, can point out something I haven't thought of uh, that does happen. So Anyway, other than that, thanks for watching and see you later.